Hello the world, Squirrels here, and I know that in the Magic community there's been plenty of buzz around two brand new ITRs that just hit the streets like a couple months ago, and several of you are asking for a specific compare and contrast of the two of them, without any videos up yet. At least, none that I've found. So here I am to tell you that I've got both the Venom and the Tarantula 2, and here are my opinions and reviews of both. Alright guys, I know this isn't why you clicked on this video, but I want to give uh, my subscribers a little bit of an update to the channel. Um, I've got a new schedule that I'm going to try to adhere to as best as I possibly can, and it's really simple, really straightforward. I'll try to have a chart up for you while I'm describing this, but basically, on every single weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm going to try to upload an episode of whatever my solo series is at the time. Right now it's Final Fantasy IX, of course, and I believe at the time I'm recording this video, I've got episode 7 or 8. As of today, I think I've got episode 8 uploaded to Final Fantasy IX. Other than on the weekends, or other than on the weekdays, I also want to upload on Saturdays. I won't be uploading on Sundays. Sundays are, like, really hectic for me. But on Saturdays, I'm calling it Super Saturdays, I'm basically going to be showcasing some kind of superhero something. Whether I'm talking about the superhero episodes of the week, um, like Arrow, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, Gotham, all of those uh, DC comics, sorry guys, that are Marvel, I just, I have a favoritism to DC. Um, but I can talk about Marvel stuff too, I promise. Um, but whether they're the episodes of the week, or they're the movies of the week, or um, they're a particular comic line that I'm into, or maybe I just landed a new comic book that I'm really interested in, whatever the case may be, anything having to do with superheroes, that's going to get uploaded on Saturdays from now on. Also on the weekdays, I've got on Mondays, I'm going to call it starting today, actually, starting today I'm calling it Magic Mondays, <laughs> um, where I'm going to be talking about magic tricks, whether I am reviewing new tricks or gimmicks or effects or methodologies um, that have come out, like I'm doing right now for this video, or whether I am showcasing a new trick that I've learned, um, showing it in public, uh, recording it that way, or if I maybe I want to do a tutorial. Whatever the case may be, if it has to do with magic, it's happening on Mondays. And then also, I know that some of you are probably curious when I'm going to start recording with my dad again. Bug Eyes, go ahead and check out his channel. Pretty awesome stuff there. But me and Bug Eyes, we like playing Seven Days to Die together. He loves that game, and I love that game as well, but he's a pro at that game, whereas I feel like every new update I'm still a noob. Those are still going to happen, I'm still going to do a solo se or a co-op series with him. Those are going to get uploaded on Wednesdays. Um, I don't really have a catchy name for them. Help me? Hump day? <laughs> but anyway guys, I hope that you really like that new schedule that I'm really planning on sticking to as best as I possibly can in the weeks to come, months to come, and so on and so forth. If you're liking what you're hearing and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and of course Without further ado, guys, without further to do, really, without further ado, without further ado, here's the compare and contrast of Venom and Tarantula 2. So, to start off, these, um, well, here are the boxes. I'll start off with that, sorry, Mike. Here are the boxes. They are really close to the same size. The gimmicks themselves are uh, virtually the same size. I mean, they're both uh, ITRs. Um, I'm going to try my best not to give away too much um, to those that are laymen in the magic community. If you don't know what a term means, uh, then hopefully you know enough about the magic community to look it up on your own. Um, but otherwise, I just want to be careful of my words here because if you're not familiar with how this trick, or the, the methods by which these two uh, tricks work, then, uh, well, they are for sale. Uh, go to their respective websites, which will be located in the description below. <laughs> but the uh, they are two completely different gimmicks. The Venom and the Tarantula 2. If you're familiar with Tarantula 1, I apologize. I never actually owned Tarantula 1. I wanted to. I am familiar with how it works. Um, but I can't give an adequate review of it because I never actually performed with it in public. Um, but I do have a friend of mine that has the Tarantula 1. So I know how it works. And, um, and it's very similar to the Tarantula 2 as the description for the Tarantula 2 on uh, Yigal Masika's website actually states they are very similar gimmicks, of course. This is part two to said gimmick. But um, but in comparison to the Venom, they are two completely different ITRs. All right, two, um, the, way they, the way they work, the storage and uh, use and application of them, the effects that you can perform with them, 
they are two different things entirely. I want to start off by saying that. So those of you that were like me, that literally were Googling on end looking for videos to compare and contrast the two of these, which one is better, which one is worse, why, etc. In a nutshell, uh, like I know there's still more to be reviewed in this video, but in a nutshell, I'll say it right now, they are two different things. They are used for two different things, for two different types of effects. What you can do with the Tarantula 2, you might be able to do with the Venom, but, um, but it, you'll have to modify the Venom in order to perform them. And likewise, things you can do with the Venom, you can't really do with the Tarantula 2, um, unless you, again, modify it accordingly. Um, and in the case of the Tarantula 2, you might actually have to buy two of them. <laughs> um, but more on that in a second. So I'll start with the Venom. I'll start with the Venom just because I buckled down and bought the Venom first. Um, so I've had it for, I don't know, four or three weeks? Three weeks now? Two or three weeks I've had the Venom. Whereas I've only had the Tarantula 2 for about one week. Um, I really liked the Venom when I first got it. I was thoroughly impressed with it. I'd only worked with ITR systems or IET systems for a relatively short period of time, maybe a couple years. And I never did any of them in public. I was always worried that there would be some kind of breakage. Um, but the descriptions for both of these gimmicks convinced me that I shouldn't have to worry about that anymore. Well, I understand why with the Venom, and it primarily has to do with the fact that, and they say this in the description so I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything, it's the fact that they give you two ITRs. Those two ITRs actually are to work in tandem with each other, and because of that, it allows for more strength. So. I have, uh, talking about the, the Venom and the Tarantula 2 here, I have, uh, what, four? Um, I have a list that's in front of me. <laughs> um, I have four pros for each of them and two cons for each of them. So you can make your own informed decision at the end of this video which one is the right one for you, or maybe both of them are. Sorry, my throat was getting dry. <laughs> So with the uh, the Venom, the Venom is by Magi Factory or Magi Factory. I'm not sure how you say that. I believe they're located in France. Um, I think, and I think in the video they say Magi Factory. Um, the Venom Project by Magi Factory. Again, descriptions and or links are below to to purchase these uh, gimmicks. Pros. What makes uh, what makes Venom so awesome? Well, I mentioned just moments ago that it is strong. It is significantly strong, and I'll probably have some footage of me performing some tricks uh, over top of this monologue here. But um, but I was able to utilize my ring, which is a heavy tungsten ring. Um, it is not a lightweight, gold, thin wedding band. My wedding band is uh, made of tungsten, which is one of the stronger metals, um, and it's it's got some weight to it. So I was concerned using any kind of IET how well that IET would be able to hold up my wedding band. And uh, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I only broke Venom, the, the Venom IET that's used in the ITR, I only broke it once or twice maybe in practicing over the last two or three weeks. Otherwise, the only other times it broke, I was literally, I was literally trying to stress its limits. <laughs> um, but really strong, and I love that feature about it. Um, and again, Part of that is because they are two ITRs working in tandem. And if you don't really understand what that means, then again, maybe you need to look into what an ITR is in Magic community. Um, but I want to try not to spoil too much. Um, second pro, the uh, the tension within the ITR is is uh, is adjustable. It's customizable, um, and it has to do with um, the fact that it is. How do I want to say this? Um, yeah, I can't really think of a way to, uh, to say it without, without ruining it, but I know that if you go to the website, then they will, in fact, actually show the, a uh, picture on, um, on illusionist.com. They will actually show you, uh, a picture of what the gimmick looks like, so I don't have a problem showing that to you. So this is, uh, well, these right here. There you go. These are the gimmicks right here. All right. They do, again, they work in tandem together. And I believe since you can see the gimmick on their website, then this probably doesn't give too much away, but you can actually see a suspension method or a suspension system of sorts inside of the ITR mechanism device. Um, you simply twist the top, 
and uh, and it adjusts the tension for you. So if you want your ITR stronger or if you want it weaker for any given practical purposes that you might have and any effects that you're trying to do, then you can adjust the tension accordingly. Hopefully that didn't give away too much. Um, it is mechanical. This is a, a third pro. Uh, it is mechanical and not electronic. So some ITRs out there actually like the tarantula too, um, and the original tarantula for that matter, are uh, electronic. This particular method or this particular device is not. It is entirely mechanical, which means you don't have to charge anything, right? Um, it's always ready to go. You never have to worry about a battery running out. It's, it's beautiful. You don't have to worry about electronic issues, technical issues. And if, if anything breaks down, then it's relatively straightforward on how to fix it. Um, a fourth pro. Uh, the fourth pro that I have for you guys is the, the more powerful effects that you can perform with it, like in uh, the video footage that hopefully you've seen by now overlaid over my face. Um, stopping my relatively heavy wedding band in mid-flight. Um, when you see it stop, that's a pretty powerful effect. You can literally hand out your ring beforehand, and then you get it back from the spectators, and the hookup happens almost instantaneously. You drop the ring, no big deal, drop the ring, no big deal, drop the ring, and then it stops. And they got a feeling for, for that type of ring and seeing it stop in midair right in front of them and they're only a couple feet from you, that's a pretty powerful effect. That effect or that type of effect requires literally minimal effort in getting that hookup set up. Um, as far as the, the other effect of moving the ring from one hand to the other, um, lighter rings work much better, I will say, but it can be done, as you saw in my video footage, it can be done with my ring. It takes a little bit of a finesse um, and build up in order to not have the spectators question what you're doing, um, but overall, it's not that big a deal. Um, and uh, and again, the hookup is, it requires virtually zero setup whatsoever. Cons. Cons. What do I not like about the Venom? Um, what do I not like about the Venom? The IET that it comes with, um, that, it's, uh, that it's shipped with, it's really visible. It's very visible. Um, I've only been able to perform with the Venom in... With, with the Venom without spectators noticing anything or catching on to something um, in low light conditions, basically. Um, I did it for my, uh, my partner, my, my coworker and his wife and uh, his boss um, and a, a friend of ours at dinner uh, last week, the week before. The week before, so almost two weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, I performed it for him or for, for that crowd at dinner table and we were sitting around and it was very, very low light conditions. I literally, I did it for my coworker. I stopped my ring mid-flight, held it there for a couple seconds and dropped it and he was like, what? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he said, do that, do that for my, for, he was referring to his boss, do that for, for that guy. And um, so I looked over at him and he was like, do what? And so I stopped my ring for him. He was a few feet further away from me on the other side of the table. Stopped my ring mid-flight, uh, kept it going. He called over the, the server for our table. I did it for the server. The server called over his boss. Um, now I'm moving my ring back and forth, stopping it in mid-flight. Uh, or mid drop for um, multiple spectators multiple times and it was beautiful everyone the the reactions were insane it was it was great and again I had never really used any ITR any ITE system uh, in public before getting the venom so those reactions were something that I wasn't really used to for that type of magic um, and it was it was really something to behold um, but again, that restaurant was it was a nicer higher end restaurant which typically like lower light conditions you couldn't see anything. It was beautiful. Um, whereas any, any kind of outside work you do, outdoors work you do with the Venom, if you do it with the stocked IET that it comes with, do it after the sun goes down. Um, uh, the, the bus stop in the mornings or in the afternoons when I, when I drop my son off and pick him up in the afternoons, I can't do it for any of his friends, um, much less the parents. <laughs> um, because you just you can see it, um, the light reflects off of it too easily. Of course, you can absolutely change the IET that it comes with. So both of these, for that matter, any I any ITR system, for the most part, that you come across, um, and those of you that are aren't laymen understand how uh, or what I'm talking about here. For the most part, you can change what's on the what's on the ITR. Um, 
to whatever IET you prefer, uh, whether it's Masika's stuff, whether it's Legacy, whether it's Infinity V2, whether it's the stuff that Illusionist sells. Personally, um, I've... Uh, I found the illusionist stuff a little too thick. Um, it's a, it's a little too visible. I actually just got the Infinity V2 in the mail today, so I'm gonna see if I can replace the IET that the Venom comes with and see if that looks any better in uh, in higher light conditions. Um, so yeah, first con was that it was highly visible. Uh, sorry, I went on a tangent there for a second. Uh, the second con for me, the the second thing I'm not too big a fan of of the Venom, is that if you use it the most recommended way. Um, which is using both in tandem and um, and just the hookups that it requires uh, for the best effects. In my honest opinion, um, the the more elaborate effects, they either require too much prep to be really practical or the, the very quick effects that you can do like stopping a ring mid-flight. Personally, I feel like the way your body has to be and the movements that you have to make in order for the effect to be to, to work – um, they they lend themselves to a spectator possibly catching what you're doing, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. Um, I prefer um, things happening in their face that I can hold for an extended period of time, and then when the trick is over, they really have no idea still what happened. Even if they think they think they might think that they think they might know a way that it could have happened. They still don't know because they didn't see anything. Um, and they couldn't suspect anything because just because I moved a certain way. So um, I really like, or I really don't like rather, that the, the effects that you perform with the, the Venom kind of require your hands, you know, in this, in this setup where I'm dropping from above and then stopping it in mid-flight. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of that of the way that kind of looks. And I've actually gotten uh, a friend of mine that I sent the video to the first video um, that I don't actually think I showed you guys on this video, um, I sent him a clip of one of the first times that I was doing the Venom, um, and I didn't have a problem sharing that with him. Uh, he's a very close friend of mine. Um, but right away, he pointed out the, the method that might be used, and it was just because of the way my hands were moving. Um, so I'm sure that in part that is my fault, for for not having it practiced well enough however the way your hands need to move in order for that ring to stop in mid drop is still a pretty substantial indicator all right on to tarantula 2 on to tarantula 2 again i never actually owned yigal masika's first tarantula um but i am familiar with how it worked and it is very similar to tarantula 2 um but with the tarantula 2 the four pros the four pros that i have for tarantula 2 again i've only owned it for about a week but in that week, oh, it is awesome. Um, it, has, it has really blown my mind. Um, the Venom blew my mind. I'm sorry I'm going back to it. But I, I don't want my reactions to uh, sway you in one direction over the other. Um, I have four pros for both. I have two cons for both. Um, the Venom blew my mind in that I felt like I could finally perform ITR um, effects in public. Um, whereas... Once I had performed them in public, I feel the Tarantula 2 um, just added another level of awe to the, to the world of ITRs, in my opinion. Um, the first pro that I have for t the Tarantula 2 is that it is significantly more invisible. The IET that it is stocked with is something that is very, very hard to catch, even if you know. Even if you know, it's very hard to, to see anything, um, which is brilliant because one of the effects, which I'm sure I'm probably showcasing the video for you now, um, one of the effects that, that you can do with it, which you can actually see in the trailers, which are also in the links below, um, is hovering a ring over your finger and then dropping it on a spectator's finger or hovering a mento or a, a lifesaver mint over your fingers or over your hands and then rising it up and entering it into your mouth um, there's literally nothing over top you can move your finger around um, around the floating object and it just it looks great it's a phenomenal effect um, and that's largely possible because the IET it comes stocked with is incredibly more invisible than the IET that is stocked with the venom um, the battery now is rechargeable. So the battery before was not rechargeable. 
Um, you had to replace the battery on the original tarantula the way I understand it. Whereas with the tarantula 2, it's actually a USB cable. It comes stocked or it comes shipped with a tiny little, I don't know what, six inch, give or take, uh, USB cable. It's a regular USB to USB micro or mini. Um, and that is what charges your, um, your gimmick. The gimmick takes about an hour or two to charge and then it comes stocked with or it comes ready to perform for like 50 to 100 performances depending on how much you use that ITR. So it's pretty it's pretty cool in that regard. Um, I'm attaching this next pro as part of the second pro. Um, that battery is recharging a near silent motor. So there is a motor that is inside that is part of the ITR system. That's what makes it work. And you you can't hear it. Like even in almost silent conditions, you can only barely hear it. So as long as you're talking or moving or there's any kind of background noise, even if it's the hum of a fan, you can't hear it. Um, it's near silent. It's beautiful. Um, the hookups for some of the effects can be nearly instantaneous. Um, some of you that have been doing have been dealing with IET systems of all sorts for some time are more than familiar with some of these hookups. Um, so I won't go into detail there, but um, but the tarantula does use some traditional, um, a, a very traditional style hookup. I'll say a very traditional style hookup. There is uh, one particular hookup that it uses for almost everything, um, and that is literally almost instanta instantaneous. So that's great. Um, finally, my last pro is that the IT this ITR has a locking mechanism for it, uh, which is phenomenally awesome. Because you can lock it, you can turn on the effect whenever you want to unlock it. It's pretty awesome. And it's, and it's from the spectator's point of view, it is visibly hands-free. Um, I know that they, they advertise that it is hands-free, but I'm trying to be as frank with you without spoiling as much as I can here. And um, it is hands-free as far as the spectator is concerned. Um, as far as you're concerned, you got to activate and deactivate stuff somehow right let's be real <laughs> um, but um, but it does appear to be hands-free and that locking method allows for some pretty cool effects so cons cons a um, couple things I don't like about the tarantula 2 because the IET it comes shipped with is incredibly um, invisible it is also incredibly fragile um, I have broken it a number of times already um, but again my ring is pretty pretty heavy duty here um, it's not lightweight uh, so performing things with my ring like in the video that you saw moments ago um, performing things with my ring like that I have to be very very careful and very particular with the way I start that trick um, but as far as reloading the IET uh, reloading the ITR it's not incredibly complicated and once you get good at it you can do it in probably less than two minutes um, assuming things didn't get overly complicated with the way it broke. Um, but, uh, but those of you that are familiar with ITRs, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, and that goes, that goes as well for the Venom, by the way. Um, in the event of any breakage in either of these ITRs, reloading can happen in, within two minutes. Um, it's not, it's not that difficult. So in that, I, uh, I do recommend replacing the IET in both of these gimmicks for, uh, for something akin to a legacy or um, the infinity v2 which again I got today so I'm gonna see how that looks um, but um, the reason I'm replacing it in the venom is to get more invisibility the reason I'm replacing it in the tarantula is to get more strength so I'm looking for that happy medium between invisibility and strength um, but you can be your own judge there um, IETs are relatively inexpensive wherever you find them and they last for uh, what you get tends to last for a decent amount of time um, second con, second thing I don't like about the Tarantula 2 is that the gimmick's intended storage and use can actually be difficult to customize for what you need. So the way you utilize the Venom, and I can again, I can show you the Venom just because they show the Venom on Illusionist's website. I don't want to show you the, the Tarantula 2 because you only really see it for a split second in uh, the trailer by Yigal Masika, in um, the Theory 11 trailer, I don't even think they show it at all. Um, that's partially because if you can see the gimmick, then you kind of get an idea for how it's stored and how it is used, um, at least in part. Um, there are a couple different ways to use it, but the intended use for it and the intended storage of it, um, how, you, how you handle it, 
is a bit awkward. Um, it's hard to customize it so that it really fits for you. Um, if you're getting a drift of what I'm talking about, you need it to fit properly in order for it to function properly um, and not look um, just like you're performing it awkwardly. Um, that said, it wasn't hard to once once I did customize it, it wasn't hard to get used to the the use and the handling of it. It's just a matter of getting it to the point where you can utilize it appropriately. Okay, world, so I've got some final thoughts for you. If you are a veteran magician or a veteran IET or ITR user, then my recommendation for you, honestly, is to get both. Um, I am not a veteran user, but um, I, uh, I was able to get both, um, so if you're curious, like I mentioned in the, uh, in the video, they have very different practical applications, um, different effects, different uses. I mean, you can even watch the trailer for yourself. You can see that the effects in one are not the effects in the other, right? So if you're a veteran, I recommend uh, getting both of them for the various applications. Personally, right now, when I'm out and about, I'm carrying both gimmicks on me. Um, some use cases, it's better to use Venom. In some use cases, it's better to use uh, the Tarantula too. So that's my recommendation there. If you are not a veteran ITR or veteran IET user, then my recommendation, honestly, is to stay away from Tarantula 2 unless you are already used to the Tarantula 1. Um, which, if you're already used to the Tarantula 1, then I wouldn't call you a, a noob. I wouldn't call you brand new rookie at this. Um, if you're brand new at this, then I highly recommend getting the Venom. The reason is for all of the pros that I mentioned earlier, um, you don't have to worry about a battery, it'll keep going, keep going for all the practice because you know you're going to be using it constantly. Um, it's incredibly less likely to snap on you because that can get really frustrating if you're utilizing the Tarantula 2 as your first ITR system. Um, and, uh, and it is more visible. Even though uh, the IET is more visible, it's typically a con. If you're brand new and um, you're not used to what you're doing, then being able to see what you're doing is definitely um, a pro, right? So uh, those are my final thoughts on them. Again, I recommend getting both, though. Um, they're used for different applications, different uses. Um, yeah. Also, you might have noticed that I'm in a different attire. <laughs> um, uh, it is the next day. I know it's Tuesday right now when you see this uploaded. It is not Magic Monday like I talked about at the beginning of this video. I apologize for that. My intent was to get it up last night, late last night, but um, yesterday was actually my birthday. So yeah, yesterday my, my wife and kids, they really wanted to uh, take me out to dinner, so we went like an hour away um, to, to go to a nice restaurant, enjoyed that, and then by the time we got home, I had to put the kids in bed, and... Um, and the, the night just got away from me, it escaped me, right? So, um, and then all of a sudden it was today. <laughs> so uh, I apologize that the, the video is just barely a little bit late. It is now Tuesday morning by the time you're seeing this. But if you like the plan going forward, please subscribe to the channel Wolf and Squirrels. If you like the video, like what you're seeing, like the video, please do. And uh, until next time, guys, stay squirrely.